like the phoenix rose from the flames. <laughs> we are back. back. <laughs> Little pause for breathing, and then we're back. Yeah, it's been an interesting period. Interesting period for both of us in our lives, and hundred days into the wonderful world of West Ham, and um, married and strategically planning my life away over here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Right, and the beauty of, of today, right, is Jen has no idea what's about to come. No, I don't. I don't. I'm holding my breath. But I'm excited because these are usually thought-provoking. Right, so here's the context. So um, I went to coaching last night. Uh, I watched the under-11s coach work for an hour. I did a think aloud on the GoPro. So I had a GoPro on my chest, and I did a think aloud as a coach developer. Uh which was interesting. That's not what we're talking about. Oh, okay. I'm saying that one. I'm saying that one. I then did the session with the under 15s, and the coach there, he's level two coach, aspiring to be level three coach. Um, he's good. He's switched on. He gets the game. He's he thinks about it. He's really keen. Um, so he said he came to watch me work with the first team the Thursday before. On the Saturday, he did the session that I did with the first team with his under 15s because it fitted the block of where he was in. So it wasn't just that, all oh, that looks shiny, I'll use that. It was thoughtful. And then he said, Right, I'd like to carry on doing some combination play, passing support stuff um, to build on it. And I'd love to see what practices you put on. Uh, I spoke to him on the train on the way home from London and I said, Oh, well, we could do this, we could do this, we could do this. And I had loads of practices going on in my head. And um, you know, I I got to the kitchen table and I'm scribbling out practices and games and and then I messaged him and said um, I'm not doing it. And let me see if I can just uh, I'm really well prepared for this. Right. So here's what here's the message I sent him. Right. I said I'm going to try something different tonight to get the lads to design the practice they think will enable us to see their passing support and combination play going to be based on perfect practice rather than rather than them exploring things they are going to tell us how they want to be coached okay so i turned up with no practice planned there was a load of equipment in the corner and bear in mind i've not worked with the 15s for a while so I, they wouldn't necessarily have there was lack of familiarity in terms of me and them I know a few of them but um and I said to them right not gonna um not got anything planned this is what I want you to do I want you to go and put on some practices that you you think will show us that you know about passing support and combination play over to them I mean Without asking what happened next, I'm going to share some feelings and thoughts I have. So I actually did have some sort of build up behind my I wasn't a tear happening there with the amount of repetitions of the word them, they're us. Um, and mm. actually, if people um, stop to think about how often those come in, those words come into the planning, um, what, you know, how are they managing it? What are they thinking? What, you know, can we and us and that co-creation and I know we've talked about this over the seasons, but that for me is just beautiful. It's just lovely. It's just amazing. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a vital core part of coaching. Um, you know, who you are coaching, how they're feeling about the session and what they're getting from it. The next part of that is, I think, again, we, we've probably had a discussion multiple times because it's linked to the autonomy. And there's a Steve Kerr clip that's floating around again, where he's sitting on the bench, Steve Kerr in the basketball world and the... Mm -hmm. The Golden State and he's talking to Steph Curry and the conversation when I did that with a group before and showed that clip was how do you get to a place where people are um, maybe comfortable and know what to say and how to manage it now slightly different there but the autonomy build up that that conversations obviously happened that what do you think um, and I would be really keen to know um, what you noticed so what what you know who showed up and what kind of thoughts they had. And um, because we know from what we've said around kind of physical education, literacy in, in the playground and what we've noticed before is that, you know, someone will get a cone and they'll have an idea from something before and they'll construct 
either something they like or something they were good at to build a picture with a little bit of a challenge. But I definitely think the exciting part overall for me is the fun element at that age that comes back in. Mm. And the maybe, you know, depending on who's watching a session and what sport we're talking about, you could have parents say, oh, turn up at no plan. Or you could have some players saying, but we've we've something coming up, a game coming up, or we lost the last game or won, and now this is what's happening. Ooh, ooh. But you have to start somewhere with this. So that they're just my initial exciting thoughts about that. And part of me is wondering, is it because you know what this coach is capable of and the foundation he's building, he's coaching on, that you could approach it that way, that you knew some structures and solid foundations were in place um, to build on that. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's where I'm going with that. Nice, nice start. Was, so Diego stepped forward um, with some thoughts uh, about what they could do. It was a bit of a pause. There was there was some there was there was a period of silence before Diego spoke. And it turns out Diego is quite new to the team, only been there six weeks or so. Wow. So in a challenging group with peers, 14, 15, difficult, challenging age around that kind of peer influence stuff, um, step forward. And then they got themselves off and they were playing. And one game, one group played 3v4, uh, sorry, 4v3 into a goal, attacking. And the other group played possession game uh, 3v4, the other way around. Um, and there was loads of passing support play combination. Um, there was loads of really good stuff going on. And I stopped the group and said, right, what, you, what do you think this is showing us at the moment? And each of the groups um, talked good about, that was a really bad sentence, talked really well, talked good. <laughs> Turned into a kid. They talked talk really well about uh, what they thought it was showing and how it did. And, um, and I asked the group that were playing 4v3, why did you go 4v3 as opposed to 3v4? To which they didn't know. And then I said, well, what's the differences? And they said, oh, well, well it might be easier if you've got an overload. Okay. But we got into a bit of a discussion on that, which was quite interesting. And then there was a conversation, and I can't remember. I've got, I've, I had the GoPro on for this as well. And there was a, I can't remember what question I asked them, but there was silence the whole group silence and and it kept going and it kept going and it kept going and it was verging into awkward silence when in fact that's not like it got in my head it was into awkward silence i just in my head i just said i'm holding this and then one kid spoke jack and he inputted and the, all these ideas then started coming from this and then they put the groups together and they came up with a rule about if you can play a one, two and a first time finish that gets double goals because that's kind of like advanced combination play. This wasn't from us. This is them. Um, and then I went onto the side and, and chatted to, to Wayne, the coach. And he said, that was really interesting. Like he's a smart man from a corporate world life. And he went, we talk about holding silence with clients. And he went, I watched you do that. And then the kid that spoke never speaks. And he was the one, this kid that came forward, um, but it was fascinating. And then we, we got into, and I said, right, how do you want us to coach you? And again, silence. And I said to him, I said, have you ever been asked that question? And they went, never. I said, at school, anyone ever asked you that school? Never. And again, we started to unpick this. And by the end of the session, I, we, had a, we had a long conversation outside about I, how I said that I've, I've done this because as young adults, you're going to have to start making decisions in your life. What she says is you're going to do, what A levels you're going to do, you're going to, go, going to go to college, are you going to go to sick form, are you going to go to university, are you going to get a job? And I said, you're going to have to start to make decisions in life. And we can use this environment to help you make decisions and ask why and challenge and, and, and think about things. And we had a really good conversation about how football is just a vehicle to help develop people. But it was, I mean, I, I put myself out there last night. It was a big gamble. And I'm still unsure as to what worked or what didn't work. But 
But isn't that okay though? Because actually, yeah, there's no, there's no right and wrong outcome of that. Like I can't, I imagine some people who are listening, even if they're in, um, you know, not invasive sports or team sports, and they have a, an academy session or they have just a couple of athletes in front of them, having that conversation it, and holding a silence, or you know, I even find in the mindfulness sessions that we do in the morning or small focus groups on, on different areas of their game. You know, sometimes the smaller groups get things going a little bit quicker and it eases mm. people in and makes them comfortable. And other times you have a bigger group and someone will say something um, just to get the group moving again. But actually the gold is in when you do probe and you do that regularly. And then what I've noticed even ourselves at West Ham is more people are speaking. There's that pause that there's a reflective time and I give them that to digest it. And they know there isn't a right and wrong. There isn't an expected answer. And we will go into smaller groups, but actually as a whole group, that voice part, that literally, that uncomfortableness of, oh, what, what have I been asked here? And I don't know. And it's okay. And, oh, they've spoke. Oh yeah, actually I was thinking that now I can say that. And does that come alive then in the game? Can I speak freely to you um, during a session because you've started this kind of process? I, I think it's amazing. And would you, would you continue that? Would you do it every so often? What are your thoughts now? Going forward. Yeah, Wayne and I spoke after about it, and, and Wayne has a desire to impart knowledge, right, uh, uh, as his view of learning. And we've got to get this information into the kids because we only have a small amount of time each week. Uh, and I think it's the balance between the two. You know, I, I definitely wouldn't work like that every week, but I think philosophically I would. Yeah. Uh, as in, I want them to be developing skills of asking questions, being critical, asking why, um, thinking for themselves, owning it. And, and Wayne has done a brilliant job with that group to create an environment that affords that opportunity, I think. Yeah. And, and then my challenge is to try and get that through all the age groups, you know, all the way through to the first team, really. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, and we, we should monitor that. I'd be happy to have a segment of that each week in our, in our conversation. But isn't that great to have a starting point? And, and as you said, Martin, was observing kind of the interactions. So getting the helicopter view, which we've talked about before, or zooming out. And what do you notice about people, even in their body language, who speaks, what they say, and how that then informs what is their intent when they go and do something, um, as opposed to going, that's right, or that's wrong, or that's not what we talked about. Well, what, do you, what are they seeing? Why are mm -hmm. they talking about it in that way? Um, so we can, and, and like I know we've spoke about this umpteen times, they're learners. And if we see them as learners, and we're learners within that environment, does it change people's mindset approaching their planning and delivery when they know everybody's learning as opposed to they're a player, they're an athlete, you know, they're a person who's learning mm -hmm. <laughs> something. Now, whether they perceive it that way or we make an assumption that everybody's learning, but there's something, there's an opportunity for somebody to absorb something. And at some point with a little bit of helper on their own, they'll navigate what that means to them, uh, you know, and, and, you know, whether we do it's, you know, spiral and there's re repetition and you can show me and, you know, all those different ways that we, we try to loop it back in. But yeah, that's really cool. What a great topic. Mm, yeah, it's interesting. It was interesting. I'm, I'm still kind of yeah. on edge about the whole thing. Well, we, you mentioned Think Aloud, you mentioned a GoPro. I don't know if people have done this before, but we could definitely kick the next session off with diving into that and their experience mm. using it. Um, but like having an opportunity to mic yourself up or put on a GoPro and then would you watch it on your own? Would you watch it with somebody else? Who are you sharing it with? And then as you said, if it trickles through the club, how exciting. Mm. <laughs> the language and the video. So yeah, anyway. Uh, another session done. It's great to be back. Great to be chatting. Um, at Coach Convo, they find us on Twitter. We're back. We're moving. Like, follow, uh, give us some suggestions. Coachconversation at gmail.com if you want to have a conversation about or find out more information about what we've talked about today. We'll see you next week and have a great week. Bye. Bye. Bye.